We now move on to question number 31. Councillor Ben Johnson. Uh, question 31 to the Cabinet Member. Um, thank you very much, uh, Councillor uh, B. Johnson, for this question. Uh, the 20 mile an hour speed limit, I think, is a, is a very interesting uh, area for us at the moment. Um, there's a couple of organisations with uh, very active in the borough, um, one's with Cycling Campaign and uh, one's with Living Streets, who are, are big believers that um, if we went with 20 mile an hour zones in the borough, but without traffic harming, that would be successful at reducing speeds and um, improving the environment in, um, in our borough. Um, unfortunately, there's, there's, there's a lot of um, people who also say that 20 mile an hour zones without traffic harming would be ineffective and that you need to therefore put um, traffic calming in, probably speed bumps or other measures, um, in order to reduce people's speeds down to 20 miles an hour. So what we've done is we've said, right, let's see how it works in Wandsworth. We've really got no evidence for how it's going to work in Wandsworth. So we've got an area in Putney where we're going to be doing, or we are doing, I should say, we've already implemented um, a pilot scheme um, to find out whether or not 20 mile an hour zones without traffic calming really work um, in, in Wandsworth. Um, and then... We'll have the results towards the end of this year, and then we'll have an interesting debate about um, how we progress with 20 mile an hour zones and 20 mile an hour areas. Um, one thing I'm probably um, not in favour of, um, well, generally I'm in favour of localism and empowering residents um, to be able to make decisions about their own streets and shape the way their communities are. Um, and I wouldn't, I'm not really in favour of blanket uh, policies which say um, Tooting is exactly the same as Putney, and therefore we should have a a borough-wide scheme necessarily. I'd much rather have residents deciding what they want on their streets. Supplementary. Mr Johnson. <coughs> I uh, thank the uh, Cabinet Member for his answer and uh, welcome much of what he said, as I also welcome the, uh, the trial that's uh, in, in Putney. Um, I'm, I was slightly disappointed with his, uh, with his uh, you know, approach to the uh, idea of a uh, blanket as he called it, 20 mile per hour for a speed limit. W would he not at least agree with me that uh, potentially borough-wide 20 mile per hour working would have the potential, and I agree entirely that this all has to be based on waiting and seeing, based on trialling, has the potential to achieve a long-lasting ingrained cultural change, which would only work if it existed over a broader area, while also avoiding uh, the costly and unpopular measures that we have to put in place in 20 mile per hour zones such as uh, physical traffic calming. That's a nice supplementary. Thank you very much for that, Councillor Johnson. Um, I, um, I, I think this is about the, the plans of mice and men, really. Um, I don't believe in grand schemes and telling people how they should live their lives. And I think that's probably true of all my colleagues here. It's one of the reasons we fundamentally believe in things like low taxation. We think people are better at deciding their own, how their lives are led and leading their communities rather than um, some grand visionary deciding this is what should happen. And I think with something like the 20 mile an hour zones, I think this is a good example of where residents can, are able to decide for themselves what they want. Humphreys. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Question 32 to the Cabinet Member. Um, I thank uh, Councillor Humphreys for this uh, question. Um, stations across the borough um, need significant improvement works. Ellsfield is a very good example of that. Um, over the next few years in Wandsworth, we're going to see um, significant development and increases in population. And, and in order to be able to handle the number of people that are going to be living in the borough, and not just, not just Wandsworth, across London as well, um, we're going to need significant upgrades and improvements to our infrastructure. When this work is taking place, and, and we're very good, um, we've been very good at starting to get some of that infrastructure and improvements in place now, um, we're going to need to make sure we minimise the impact um, on residents as they try to do their daily commuting, and we're also going to need to make, um, we're also going to need to make sure that they, they're, they're finished on time and preferably on budget as well. Supplementary, Madam Mayor. Yes, Humphrey. Uh, thank the cabinet member for his reply, and I'm sure the uh, residents of the area will be very grateful uh, for those things being kept on track, as it were. Um, on an equally related uh, transport matter, is the, uh, cabinet, does the Cabinet Member agree with me that uh, improvements to signalling on the district line would vastly improve the amount of trains that could be run in uh, rush hours, peak hours, and uh, will he back me with a call to improve that signalling as fast as possible to get the service better on the district line too? Uh, thank you very much for the supplementary, Councillor Humphreys. Um, I totally agree with you in terms of uh, the signalling. I think um, across London, London Underground needs a significant investment 
um, for uh, many, many, many decades, actually, of, of, of underinvestment and, and um, the amount of bottlenecks that we see across uh, the system. Um, and until recently, when we've had seen significant improvements in reliability over the last year or so, um, significant reliability problems on the, on, the, on the network. And the district line is a good example where we've got some extra trains now, which are very much welcomed, and I'm really pleased we've managed to get those. Um, but we do need an upgrade of their signalling system as well to be able to cope with the numbers that we're looking at. And I'm, I'm greatly concerned that if we had a sort of slash and burn policy, potentially, on funding of uh, uh, Transport for London, that we may see that that, would, that scheme, um, you know, the chances of a uh, signalling upgrade would be uh, set off into the distance, perhaps in the never-never. Um, so I think it's really important that we get um, a mayor who wants to invest in upgrading our services in Transport for London. Thank you. I'm sure we are all desperate to invest in our transport services on all sides. And on that point, would he acknowledge that, in fact, all sides have been desperate to see the improvements carried out at Earlsfield uh, um, Station? And would he also acknowledge the, the work done by the MP for Tooting in helping to secure these improvements? Um, I, I have to say, I... I, I um, I, 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 am, I was very surprised, um, uh, thanks, thanks to Councillor, Councillor Maxwell Scott um, this evening. He, he was showing me um, Elsfield Station's reference in Wikipedia. Um, and I was, I was very surprised to see that, um, Council, uh, that um, uh, Sadiq Khan um, was um, claiming um, uh, um, the, the fact that he had announced the upgrade to Earlsfield Station in, in June 2010, of course, when by which time he was uh, in opposition. So I, I, I am, I'm completely, he seems to be confused about what his role in Earlsfield Station um, upgrade has been. So I, I, we, we believe that the, the information was put on by someone in his team. So I'm not, I'm not, if he doesn't know really what his role has been, I'm not sure I could tell you. <laughs> Councillor Carpenter. Question 33. I thank uh, the member for this uh, question, uh, Councillor Carpenter. So, uh, I think um, Nine Elms is possibly the most important um, development go or you know, a re re regeneration going on in the borough uh, and will be for many, many years, the, the huge size of it and, and the impact on the borough. Um, it's really important that we debate these points and we look at them very closely and scrutinise um, the way the development is, is, is going on. Um, one of the big discussions and, and debates that we need to have, or we've had, um, is over the level of affordable housing and what infrastructure we want. Um, we're quite clear in this borough, we're very um, in favour of development and regeneration. We've been fantastic at um, um, improving the borough through attracting investment into it. Um, and one of the things that we are concerned about is, and the report you all have seen probably from um, one of the homeless charities yesterday, talked about the numbers of people in London who are desperately trying to, who are looking to leave London because of the extreme cost of family housing in London. Um, and the way um, we need to um, improve the amount of uh, housing um, in London for those is families is, about, is through quantum. Um, it's, it's, it's no good playing around with small numbers. You've got to look at large numbers of building across, across the capital. And Nine Elms is a key part of that. Um, and in, in this borough, we've decided we, actually it's really important that we get huge amounts of development in, in Nine Elms to meet the needs and aspirations of people in Wandsworth, as well as um, people who are going to be future residents of Wandsworth. And that means you need to have a much better infrastructure in order to have higher levels of density, and that means you must have the Northern Line. We've had a, fu a study funded um, in looking at the costs of the Northern Line and other infrastructure that's really essential, such as uh, parks and schools. Um, in uh, the Nine Elms area. And what that clearly shows us that is that if we're to get the level of housing that we want to see in Nine Elms, um, and we want to see the, that requires the Northern Line to be built, and that level of infrastructure requires a significant amount of contribution from the developers who are, going, who are there, and therefore we've really had to look at the higher level of contribution. Now that means that, um, for, you know, that you have to have trade-offs. In our view, um, the 15% is different to the quantum, if you, if you like. So the amount of affordable housing potentially is higher as long as you get the northern line. You could get a higher percentage elsewhere, but you might get a lot less quantum if you don't have the infrastructure supporting that. So it's really important that we um, look at the infrastructure, and therefore I, I, I firmly believe that um, our £40,000 per unit and the 15% affordable housing um, is really um, 
important. Um, can I just say, I, I was a bit surprised at the use of the language, uh, ghettoization uh, of it. Uh, it's no normally, not always, but normally ghettoization is used for um, particular ethnic groups or, or, or um, particular deprived uh, socioeconomic groups for describing an area. Um, I assumed um, you may perhaps be referring to a sort of a monocultural uh, uh, area, but I think Nine Elms, given what's already in Nine Elms, will be a very diverse community, a very mixed community in terms of ethnic mix, in terms of socioeconomic mix, um, and that's something I, I welcome. I think it'll be a very vibrant community moving forward. Councillor Carpenter. Thank you. Uh, thank you for that uh, response. Um, to date, there have been over 9,000 units uh, approved of housing uh, in, in the area. 83% of those are at market value, only 7% are social rented and 8% intermediate. And this will inevitably result in an unbalanced social mix, which will ultimately, I think, result in social problems down the road. Now, I assume the Cabinet members are aware that Sir Edward Lister is now reported to be supporting the use of tax incremental financing to finance the Northern Line extension. And as he's aware, tax incremental financing spreads the costs over 25 years rather than concentrating them up front as a community infrastructure levy does. And would he not consider perhaps uh, adopting Sir Edward Lister's uh, uh, suggestion that uh, an element of tax incremental financing which would allow the CIL to be lower and therefore a higher proportion of uh, social housing and inter affordable housing, which will produce overall, <coughs> down the road, a better social mix for the area. Um, I, I thank Councillor Carpenter for his, his in, intelligent uh, um, supplementary. I, I, I think that the issue at the moment, as far as I'm aware, is that um, we haven't got the details of the TIF scheme, which is going to be a national uh, scheme. And there are um, significant uh, issues in there around the timescales that they're talking about. And, and until they're resolved, it's, very it's, very, it's basically impossible for us to evaluate um, our options. Um, but I'm, I'm sure the Director of Finance, when they're available, will look at those options and we'll be able to look at their impact on Nine Elms. I'm intrigued by very interesting answers from, from Councillor King, um, but could he point me to any Riverside development in recent times, um, the one at Chelsea Bridge or Gargoyle Wharf, uh, with a markedly high multicultural context compared with the rest of Wandsworth, because I'd like to visit it because I haven't seen one yet. Um, I'm afraid I don't have um, particularly good knowledge of e each individual Riverside block to be able to answer the question, Councillor Belton. Councillor Walsh. Thank you, Madam Mayor. To ask question 34, please. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Councillor Walsh, for this question. Um, a few weeks ago, I met with the um, All England uh, Tennis Club um, to talk about not just the arrangements for Wimbledon, but also um, around the Olympics. We've, we've um, done a lot of work at significantly improving the parking arrangements that we've had traditionally around um, Wimbledon, and we expect them to work extremely well for the Olympic period as well. Supplementary, uh, Madam Mayor. Uh, can you assure me that the two-week period between the Wimbledon tennis and the Olympics starting will be just pleased as normal, forced as normal. Uh, thank you very much for the supplementary, uh, Councillor Walsh. Um,